All right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Nussbaum, and we're here once again, burning the house down twice a week, every Monday and Thursday. I had to think about that for a minute. We've been doing this for two years, coming up on a couple hundred episodes, and I almost said that they've only ever came out on Mondays and Thursdays. Well, like I always say, that's why you're not tuning in for me. You're tuning in for all amazing guests. And that house that we just burnt down, it's not a pissed off homeowner. It's your life. It's your business. It's your relationships. It's everything that's holding you back from being that champion that we know you're meant to be. And today we have a fantastic guest as always. Pam, it is great to have you here today. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Awesome. Before we dive into it, why don't you take a moment and tell all the construction champions a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So I'm a fractional CFO. I work with Ascent CFO Solutions out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, really what that just means is I work part-time for a number of companies, multiple companies at the same time, um, really sharing that resource. Uh, I began my career as a CPA, accountant, public accountant, um, and fast forward a number of years, perhaps 30 or more. Um, now I work with a variety of companies um, who you know, are experiencing rapid growth, maybe cash issues, um, some type of transition. Maybe mm. they're trying to raise funds. Um, maybe they want to sell the company in a couple of years. Um, maybe they're going through their first audit. They just realize that they need a little strategic assistance. And so that's where folks reach out and, and desire to have some services. Um, I really, I have experience with a lot of industries, a lot of different companies, a lot of different roles, but specific to this audience, um, I have 13 years of home building experience. Um, I also have additional years in some HVAC companies, some roofing clients. So I think what's unique in the fractional space is the ability to see companies across industries and see that they're all trying to solve similar problems. So it's really cool where you can see what somebody's trying to do in one arena and how you can implement it to help companies in a different industry. So that's a little bit about me. Awesome. I love it. And you know, we have all kind we have all kinds of professionals on here all the time. And that is what I say is the most powerful thing about them is your eyeballs get to see so much stuff going on that even if you hire somebody in-house, they just do not have the access to the data points or the understanding. And it's what I love about professionals that offer their services up on a, a fraction or a consulting base, because you're not just buying the service. You're buying the understanding of what they learn from dealing with clients all over the nation and sometimes in different industries as well that can drastically be the game changer. So I, I'm super excited for our conversation today. And I'm going to dive right in there and I'm going to ask the million dollar question. And that is what makes a construction champion? Hey, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Nussbaum here. And I want to talk to you about how you can automate all of your marketing. We've had so many people on here talk about getting the systems in place. Well, we have partnered with Build 12 and Construction Champions podcast. Les O'Hara, the founder, what really excites me is his 30 years in the industry. And now he's built a system to be able to nurture your leads and continue to utilize that. I personally use the system myself. Build 12 is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of value in there. And it's a way to start getting away from Angie's list and all of that kind of stuff and start actually creating your own leads every day and have a system for them. So go on our website check out the show notes, go check out Build 12. So I actually love this question and the various perspectives of folks that come to your, your, your audience here. From my vantage point, um, and as a person that I'm always looking at the numbers and long-term strategy, I really look at construction in, in all of the, um, really the varieties, the commercial, the residential, highways, mechanical systems, all of it. 
and the incredible impact that they have on the economy. Mm. Um, it's just not just the employees and the companies, but the companies and folks who provide the services and materials to those folks, and even the companies and, and folks who provide to those folks. And then you have the financing of those projects because it takes a lot of money. And you know we may get into a little discussion about cash a little bit later, but it takes a lot of money. So whether it's the traditional lenders, it's the private equity, it's the venture capitalists, you know, all of those folks. And then if we bring it down to the bottom level, all of the additional folks, folks like me, who are helping in the background, purchasing HR. So in my mind, a construction champion is all of the folks really in that ecosystem, any of those roles who can be really proud of the very tangible contributions they're making to their communities and to people's lives. I love it. Because, you know, I think a lot of times people look at it as like to be in the construction space, like you have to be the one swinging the hammer. And that is so far from the truth. And I'm saying this as somebody that started out swinging the hammer and then moved into an executive role and then doing what I do now. There is so many moving pieces to a construction project and what what it does to your local economy, the jobs the the growth i mean we we build the communities that everybody lives in it, it's very powerful and it's definitely in a non thought about aspect of construction i really love it i think I, it makes me smile when i'm driving around and i see whether it's cranes or i see people working and or i even see right refinancing projects because it does like this is like when I was in home building, when we would do the, the the walkthroughs and you see these gorgeous homes that you know you had a part in, there is a sense of pride that you just, it's that tangible, you see the finished product and you know you did something. Um, I love that we're building, not just for like today's communities, but you're building for like, this is where people live, this is where they bring their families, this is where they celebrate their occasions. It really is a, a, a very enjoyable industry absolutely and the ones that understand that are the ones that are building empires like if you understand like what we do is where people live their lives no matter whatever aspect that is you do in construction if you're working in residential properties it is where people raise their families it's where they live their life if it's in commercial it's where they go do their life that's where they right. spend their time after work or where they spend their time during work. We have such a, a direct responsibility when it comes to these experiences and it's all in our hands. And like you said, it's very uh, money intensive. It is money intensive. And so I think that that's, that's where a lot of the times when I say, you know, in my preface where we start to work with companies, you know, managing that cash flow is so important for companies. Um, you know, it's really easy. I don't, I, most owners, most CEOs, they know what's in the bank today, but sometimes they don't have the opportunity to look down the road to say, you know, where am I going to be in three, six, nine months? Do I need to be concerned? And so oftentimes, again, somebody like me who has the like the different perspective. I'm not trying to run the business. I'm not in charge of operating and doing all of the gigantic things of managing the business. But you come in and you're like, let's take a look, very long view of your cash and let's plan for the future because there is in almost all construction, I mean, the obvious culprit is weather, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows, but there's other, there's other reasons why you might have um, you know, look dips and, and high points in your cash flow. It could be labor shortages. It could be, honestly, it could be like the life cycle of the projects themselves. Mm -hmm. And so planning for those long term really helps businesses be prepared and um, have the confidence in moving forward. 
Yeah, it's a life cycles of projects, <laughs> money in, money out. Like this is this is a a real a real pain. It's not really a pain point. I think it it's a self inflicted pain point. We really, as an industry, shoot ourselves in the foot when it comes to this. We get that money in, bank account looks fantastic. Next thing you know, that money's gone, and it's like we're not done with the project, the forecasting. It's so critical to run in a business. It's why I say on Harold all the time is that it doesn't matter that we're in construction. We're a business. You have to treat it just like every other business. Our service just happens to be construction. We build shit. But at the fundamental core, we're a business. And and honestly, there's things that are unexpected. Like I would, I, when I was working with companies individually, we would come up with our best laid plans. We would put together the best business plan based on the best available information. We would have all of our, you know, all of the jobs and everything that were, was work in progress. And we thought everything. And then I would go to the owner and I say, now we need to cut that by 25% because life happens and you don't know what it is. Something's going to happen, whether it's a delay in permits or whatever. And so thinking that everything's going to run perfectly is something that you really want as an owner to believe. You think you're operating at the best efficiency. You really want it to be there. And honestly, that degree of reasonableness and let's take it down helps you actually manage stakeholder relationships too. Because at the end of the day, you want to do what you said you're going to do. Mm. And that's how you build the confidence and you build that real comfort level again with your lenders, your, your VCs, whoever it is that's helping you with the cash you need to run the business. Yeah. Because it, it's so like we construction is going to go sideways. Like there's really <laughs> no, if, ands, or buts. It's about probably the only consistency is during the project, there is going to be something that happens that causes the delay or something. But yet, we go into every project as this is going to be awesome. And we, we try, we're, we're shooting for point off the miraculous project that is just amazing when that statistically speaking probably has never happened. If it does, fantastic maybe write a book about it right <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it, and that's not just in construction it's in every industry but it always happens and whatever it is and like i say like the obvious culprit is weather it, it could be any number of reasons it could be even interest rates who knows um labor shortages in your market there's a lot of things that happen in construction there's so mo many moving parts so Honestly, I think that forecasting model, it, it's nice because then you can run some scenarios. What's the best? What's the worst? What's the most likely scenario? And you can make decisions around that. You can take the longer view. Oh my goodness, if, if we actually don't get our receivables in, in this month as expected, we may have a cash crunch. What are we going to do if we do? What is our plan B? It's super important to prepare for those so that you're not caught on your heels yeah and these are questions that i feel as as being leaders in the in the industry or leaders in your company you should be asking the what if questions for one to not just educate yourself but also to get people's minds thinking that stuff can happen and we might have to make decisions. How do you empower people to make decisions is you ask these questions and they start working through it and you start building some trust there. Well, what's really interesting too is you actually can find yourself in a situation where you've honestly have uncontrolled growth. You're feeling so great. The company's doing so wonderful that it doesn't occur to you. You ramp up your personnel, you ramp up your expenses. And again, with that, without that longer term view, you're ready to rock and roll when actually things have cooled down or things have slowed down or they're coming in slower than expected. So I do think that the other 
point of this projecting is keeping it up, making sure that you have good inputs and you're continually updating it. You've got your project managers, your finance team, your stakeholders, they all have current information and we need that ongoing, not six months ago information. <laughs> No, that, that's so critical. And that opens up a great point of conversation here is because one of the things that we are known for not being good at is getting the appropriate data into the appropriate places. And a lot of times we get a lot of garbage in, a lot of garbage out. And it, it, it's it doesn't have to be that way because, like you said, people have it in real time. It's not like we just don't do it and we don't do it well. The companies that do it well do it really, really well. And for the guys out there that don't, we'll just say they do it subpar. Uh, because, you know, we're, we're trying to get better. They're listening to Construction Champions podcast. So they're, they, they know there's a problem. How do they start to fix it to where they have good information coming in? Because I, I'd have to take it if they're going to hire you. Like you can't do your job if you're looking at bad information. That's so true. And so I think it, it boils down to first understanding your processes as a company, because there's almost always places where the improvements can be made, right? There's always some places, but also starting to think about how technology can help you. you we've got data visualization tools now that like we've never had before. They can take all of this data and put it into you know, really distill it down to charts and different viewpoints where you can look at that and make some really good decisions around it. So when you're looking at your data, you have to figure out like, what are what are the important pieces that are critical to making this decision? Let's focus on those. And then let's start to look at some of these tools that are available to us and, and wrap a process around it and be consistent because consistency really is where you start to get traction as an organization. You can update it once, you can do it every once in a while, but if you have consistency, that's where you're gonna see the traction. Awesome, I love that. I mean, that that is what it matters, like consistency, just like anything, like that's what will win at the end of the day. Now, let's talk to the guy that's listening for the first time. It has a complete disaster going on. What what would you say are a couple of things that they need to figure out? Like, what are those things like they need to wrap their mind around these numbers or this data? Or what, what are just a couple of things that they should immediately educate themselves on? Well, I think that's a great question. And so, one, it depends on the company, the circumstances, what the real problem is, right? First, sometimes it's just figuring out what the real problem is because it could be hidden with something else. But if we are coming in and there is a cash flow problem, let's just focus on that problem. There's a cash flow problem. Oftentimes companies will say, my PL says I've made half a million dollars, but I don't have any money in the bank. What happened? So, so there's a difference between your accounting and what you did with the money. And so I think when we have companies that are perhaps in crisis, um, we look at the cash, we look at the ins and outflows. And quite honestly, sometimes we take it all the way down to a 13 week cash flow. We'll take it down to, let's almost take it to the daily cash in, cash out. Let's make sure that we understand what is going in with our cash process so that we can make these bigger decisions. Perhaps that means we have too much overhead. Perhaps that means our our collection process is too slow. Perhaps that means our change orders weren't processed. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that can go wrong in there, but if we take it down almost to a 13 week daily inputs and outputs, we can see what's happening. Let's start there and let's make the improvements. And usually I like to touch the low hanging fruit, but also, also I like to hit the ones that make the miss, most impact quickest. So let's fix the biggest problem first, and then let's move on. I, lo and I, I love your beginning answer to that, is that a problem can be disguised. Like people think they have this kind of problem. What, what I know and I understand about construction is there is a lot of money moving hands back and forth. And like, I, I challenge a lot of everybody listening, like when was the last time you looked at a 13 week day to day? Like, what is the, these numbers can get 
insane. I mean, if let's just say you're doing a, a 1.2 million to keep it easy, there's a, there's a hundred thousand dollars that's coming in and out of your business every month. Just chances are it's going out just as fast as it's coming in because well, one industry where well, that happens is like you're either paying for materials or you're paying subcontractors or you're paying your guys or insurance. There, there's money comes in and money goes. And a lot of times I feel like we just get stuck in a cash crunch because it goes out a lot faster than it's coming in. Well, if you have that very narrow viewpoint of what's in the cash today, what's in our accounts today, and you're not thinking long term, you may say, oh, I've got plenty of money. I'm just going to buy that piece of equipment. I'm just going to buy that vehicle instead of financing it. And sometimes the better decision is to put some money away for the next three months where you are going to have a dip and have the cash available for payroll or whatever you need it for and finance that. Even though you thought you had the money for it, are you looking long-term enough to say, I haven't funded my rainy day fund yet? Mm. So I, you work in some other industries. That, that leads me to a question because that, that runs rampant in the construction industry. It's the oh, we have some extra cash or we have this project, we're going We're going to have this money, let's go buy a truck. Let's go buy a piece of equipment. Let's buy this. Is that something that is like centralized to the construction industry with the thinking process or are other industries affected by the fact they just need to spend it? Well, I think a lot of it, so great question. I think a lot of it has to, to do with the big purchases like construction just has a lot of big heavy equipment um even whether it's like to finish your projects or use in your projects you just have these very large purchases not every company has hundreds of thousands of dollars that they have to lay out immediately i mean if you look at some of these um, fleet vehicles for, for some of these companies, there's a lot of money in there. And so again, are you going to buy them all because you think you're going to keep them for 30 years? Or are you going to finance them? And so I, I honestly think most often you can do a finance buy analysis. And unless the company has so much cash, we don't know what to do with it. We don't know where to invest it. I'm always going to consider financing first because I want to see longer term, let's at least say 12 months and rolling cash forecast is important because it's not a cliff. At the end of December, we're not going to start all over again. What does next January look like? What does next April look like? What is it looking like? And then, you know, again, there's like we talked about so many opportunities for things to go off the rails. I mean, if you scoped it improperly, happens right? Um, if you thought that you had great um, folks, subcontractors working on your job, and all of a sudden now they're gone, maybe they lost a key personnel, and now you've got to go out and find twice as expensive personnel to work on that, your budget is blown. So all of your best laid plans now have to be adjusted. Where are we going to be really at the end of six months? And do I need this cash? Do I need this to cover payroll? while I'm waiting for my final payment, while I'm waiting for my retainage. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big component of having some reserves and whatever that, that form looks like for you, uh, being somebody that has been in a cash crunch, that has had to go through like getting the money in before payroll comes out and then have like fit like, Chet's got to go out at noon. They can't go out at seven because we got to make sure the funds are in. Like I have been there. That shit sucks, but you can get out of it. You just have to learn what you're talking about. You just have to start to learn. There is a future in being a construction business. You have to pay attention to the future <laughs> and you where do. you're going and what's happening. You do. And quite honestly, you know, many companies find themselves from time to time not always in these situations. And so I think that that's critical when you know it's coming to be very transparent. You're talking to your customers. You're asking, when are you actually going to pay me? You're talking to your vendors. Listen, we're going to be a little bit late. Maybe you're renegotiating terms. 
but pretending like it's not going to happen isn't going to help anybody. It damages relationships and it, it actually makes the situation worse. So seeing it coming helps you if you've already gotten all the way down that road, then let's manage through it to the other side. Awesome. I love it. Great conversation today. Uh, definitely a lot of value for the construction industry. For everybody listening out there, if they wanted to connect with you, follow you, ask questions, where's the best places for them to do that? So again, I work for Ascent CFO Solutions. Um, based out of Boulder, Colorado. My email is pam at ascentcfo.com. Be happy to talk to any of your listeners who might want to talk through some of their situations or decide whether maybe they need a little bit of forecasting themselves. <laughs> awesome, Pam. Well, thank you for taking the time and being on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, Construction Champions, another episode in the bag where we talked about forecasting past, present, future. A lot of times in construction, we completely disregard the future and we only think about the past, how the project went bad, how this happened, or how that was a great project. And then we just figure everything's going to work itself out headed into the future. But there's a lot of guys out there listening that I know are stuck in these 90-day cycles where it's, I have great cash flow, we have great money, and then 90 days later, it's like, how are we going to do this? And this stuff can all be avoided. And I speak from experience in this. I, I've been down this road where you're on that roller coaster, you feel like you're, like you're in the rapids, and one minute you're just fighting the water and the next minute you're coasting along just fine. And it doesn't have to be that way. There, there's things that you can do to start to understand your business from a lot better foundation, more fundamentally understand what's happening right now, why stuff happened in the past, and then be able to say, this is what's going to happen in the future, and then be able to prepare for that. Uh, it's great people like Pam that can help with that. So construction champions, Make sure you go out, check out all of our fantastic sponsors, and until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Hey everyone, wondering why you need builder comms for your next construction project? Here are three solid reasons. First, it keeps your team and clients seamlessly connected in real time. No more delays or communication mishaps. Second, all your critical documents are organized and just a click away. Lastly, Accessibility to project photos is immediate and secure. So get Builder Comms now and experience stress-free project management like never before. Get yours now and simplify your construction projects.